Many times when you start using Jira, you start creating tasks, you start moving it from one column to another column, start talking about these tasks, issues, stories during your various meetings. It gives you a good traceability. You can see where things are and you start wondering, can I start using some of the reports from Jira, especially if I'm using Kanban projects and get some intelligence about how things are working, where we are, how things are flowing, where we got stuck so that as a manager, I can get a quick glance of how things are. So I can do a right intervention. From Ajira, there is a one interesting report called Cumulative Flow Diagram, and it's a standard report, but it's available in Jira. And in this video, we are discussing that Cumulative Flow Diagram. Now it's a little complicated diagram. So before I go into the Jira, I want to give you a little briefing so that we understand the theory behind it. And then we see how can we make use of this particular diagram from our Jira projects, especially when we are working in a Kanban mode. So I use my whiteboard and I give you a basic, super basic Kanban board. So this is my Kanban board having backlog in progress and done equivalent to your Jira board, assuming you have these three status. And I have in the beginning, day zero, I am just starting my day one. I am starting up with the five backlog items. Now, this is my beginning of the day. And during the day, I have picked up the item one and moved into in progress stage. So when I finish my day, this is my status. So I started with the five items and I have a one item which is moved into the in progress stage. Now, how do we depict this in a cumulative flow diagram just at the zero and one ending day? So in a cumulative flow diagram, in your X axis, you talk about days. Yeah? So a timeline. So I can say it starts from zero probably, and then I have a day one, then I have a day two, then I have a day three, something like this. Yeah, So it has a race. Now the Y axis is number of items. Yeah? So you can say number of work items on your boards. So it's an area graph. If I uh, use uh, the word of uh, uh, say Excel, yeah, it's a just generic area graph which can help us in knowing where are we in a particular area of the work, but it's a number of items. So as of now, in my whole board, the number of items are five. So I need to have a five as a top number. So I can say if I have a one, two, three, four, five. So here I am. Yeah, This was my day zero. I started with the five items. And when I finish, when I finish my day one, I was still having five items. But there was a difference. On the zero, when I started, everything was in progress, uh, it was in backlog. But when I'm finishing my day one, I have one item in progress. So how I depict that? I can say, okay, let's take a color for in progress. In this case, I'm just picking up yellow. And I can say that at the end of a day one, I had the in progress status one. So which means from zero, I moved to the one yeah, in progress stage. But total items are still five. So number of items I can say are still five. This gap, yeah, this gap is four, which is representing items here. And this gap is one, which is representing item in progress. So that's how we, we read uh, the, the cumulative flow diagram at this particular stage. We can say, okay, this is where we are just, I am trying to clean this. Okay, so the day one is over. Now we have one item in progress and we had four item in backlog and this is how our cumulative flow diagram looks like. Let's go further and say what is happening in the day two. During the day two, this thing moved to in progress. Yeah, uh, from in progress to done. Let me create this line here uh, uh, as well. Okay, uh, well, we'll see. If I can just, I can plot this line, looks like I removed it uh, somewhere while I was doing cleaning. So just, just keep it the, the line here. So this item moved to the done stage and I have another item which came into the in progress stage. So this could be my ending of the day two. Now, this is how my day two end. So what should be the cumulative flow diagram? We keep the yellow color for in progress, but we have something for done, yeah? So let's take a, another color for our line for the done stage, I keep it green. So there was no done till day one. At the end of a day two, I have a done stage. So I can say, okay, 
this moved from 0, 0 to 1 because it was 0, 0 in the, in the, uh, at the end of a day 1. So it moves to 1, so this area. So we, we plot the, the graph from right to left. So we first find out what was the column or item into the right column. So we mark it done. Then I have a one more item in progress, so total two. So if I come till here, I have total two items. So I will take a point, I will call, change my color to yellow and say, okay, I need to point out till two. So it is like still in progress is one. Yeah. So gap between green and yellow line is one, which is showing me the area in, in, in progress. But till in progress, I am two. And if I don't have any new item added, then still my total items remain five. So which shows that gap between the yellow and black is showing as a three. So I have a three item into the backlog. So this is the status after the day two. Let's take one more day so that you understand overall cumulative flow diagram, how it get plotted, and then we go to the zero. So on day three, assuming uh, that this item also come to done. So we have a two items marked done. We got little aggressive. We just took two items in progress now. So the, the number of items has been increased in, in progress. And uh, we are just taking a situation where we also got few items more in our backlog. So we can say that there were two more items got added uh, in our backlog stage. So I can say it's like a item six and seven, I'm just putting the number six and seven. So these two items also got added. They were type of items. Now, how the cumulative flow diagram will look like when we are done with the day, day three. So again, we start from bottom. I need to find out the green color first. So on a day three, I have two items here. So I need to go till here. So I can say two, uh, sorry, uh, two till green. So it goes like this, two till green. Then I can say I have a two items in yellow. So I need to go till four now this time. So here I need to say till here four. So you can say that this is like increasing this time. So it was two, 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 but this area is becoming a uh, 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 little more now. So you can say this gap is two. That's a work in progress that shows. And till here we have covered four items. But since we have two more items which are added in the backlog, now we can say that we also move to a uh, six and seven here probably so we can say this is going till seven uh yeah sorry uh this this item should go till seven on a day three here only so it has to go three seven like this yeah so little bit here you can say this is like seven yeah so this is how we can say that my upper line the black line is showing my inflow of work so it can clearly shows me now i'm sitting in a day three Looks like we had a stable demand, nothing came, but on the day three, we got two more items added. So as you sense, this cumulative flow diagram is giving you a historical trend of your Kanban board. You see how my Kanban board has, uh, there was a flow of item moving from one column to another column, and I can possibly do some intervention based on that flow. Because when I see this board, I don't know what was the state of the board two days ago. I, I don't get it because things has been overwritten. But when I look at a cumulative flow diagram, that's its utility. It shows me what is work in progress at any given stage. It shows me what is the rate of arrival, the top line. The bottom line shows what is the rate of departure, how frequently we are doing things. If the curve becomes steep, we know that a lot of things are getting done. If the curve becomes flat, the slope becomes flat, we know that things are not getting done. So it's, it's a stable thing. So this is like a theory of of your cumulative flow diagram, super uh, uh, small. Let's get into the JIRA way of looking at cumulative flow diagram. If you have any question, comment, definitely you can post in our uh, uh, comment section, uh, but here we explore today. So starting uh, from your boat, you can say that you might be at your boat. Uh, I can back to project, just I'm starting from the overall thing. Usually you are at a can, uh, your Kanban board where you open your project. Let me do it full screen. So from a Kanban board, you can go to reports. Yeah. And the reports, you can see a cumulative flow diagram. So this is where you see this kind of, of graph. And it takes time depending upon the type of data you have, and it will plot a cumulative flow diagram for you. Now, uh, one thing is here right now, 
since my boards are having, my board is only having three status, it is showing me three status. If I have a multiple columns, four, five, six, then all columns will appear. I, I can filter them out, but that, that's the, the idea. So all stages will appear. And then I can see the movement of all these work item from one area to another area. So in this particular case, the, the, the orange color is our backlog item. So we can say that this, but uh, in, in my example, I started uh, from a, a zero, I had a lot of work and then I started plotting it. In this particular case, the work is gradually increasing. Yeah, it was starting from zero. So that's how you can see. So you can see the up work, the total number of pending work is, is definitely increasing. So this is like a total number of items. And these are the, the lines which shows a respective area. So uh, first try to read this. Let's see what does it mean. Let me scroll it a little down. So the, the done column is showing the number of items get marked done cumulatively. So if I am here in the August, these many items say 2,500 something has been marked done. At this point in time, the in progress line is showing that this is the small curve. So we can clearly see a very less number of items are in progress. And the orange color is showing the items, the, the difference between this, the orange area. The orange area represents the number of items in a backlog stage. So these are the three stages and this is how it is. Now, usually this is a nice window where you can see a filtering out of it. So you, you can use overview and you can move it towards the desired timeline, get it to more specific details. So here you can say, okay, this is how I can probably see it for a shorter duration. So this is like I'm running for last uh, uh, five, six months, and uh, this is how it can and change. Now, usually the super level graph may not make much sense to you because if you have very well managed uh, a, a Jira board or a Kanban board, then you can get a feel overall teamwork, but you probably need to apply some filters to make some sensible information out of it, me, yeah? Now, what can I do? How can I make real sense out of this flow diagram? So there is a facility, you can say refined reports. And in the refined report thing, you can see your quick filters. So you can definitely select and remove columns. Here, we just have a three columns, so we don't have an option to remove anything. We want to have it. You can have swim lanes in your board. You can add or remove them. But the major focus I am focusing on is a quick filters. So you can create quick filters on your board. Probably you know how to do that, uh, uh, or we can explore it in a, another video. And all your quick filters will appear here. So what I am doing here is, like I'm like a product owner for this team. I might be only interested in issues which are created by me. So I want to click here and say, okay, show me the status of work which is created by me. Yeah. So in your team, the, the uh, uh, two, three information you can figure it out from here. One is that if you're a product owner, how many items are getting added by the product owner in the backlog? Here I can see that looks like I am as a product owner is not adding many items nowadays. It's been a little stable. So I'm adding less item, one or two items only. So the new work is not getting arriving well. Uh, if I am a scrum master and I'm worried about my product owner is not giving enough work, then I can say the issues created by product owner and I can say the whole status of product owner issues only. I can create a quick filter for the product owner. And if I see the, the arrival line is becoming stable, then I probably need to talk to him and says, what is happening? Looks like we don't have a work for next month. So let's do something about it. So that's uh, important information, especially if you have a right uh, 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 thing. Now, similarly, what all work I have done, how they are getting done. So I can say here from last two, three days, the done line is pretty flat. So it looks like not much work is getting completed. So it looks like my work is not getting added as well as I'm not uh, create, uh, getting something uh, done here. All the items which are added by me, these are the one by, which are still in, in progress. I can find out the number of here. So you can say it's around uh, the 30, 300 something is, is the number, which is which is my done thing. And there is a some amount of number 2023, which, which this area is in the, the uh, 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 stage where we are okay, saying that they are into the backlog. So the rate, the flow, the direction gives me an idea that how my work related thing is, is moving. Now, sometimes this becomes an issue when you are as a scrum master trying to understand it, say, how do I know this graph is really right? Yeah, what does it mean? Yeah, I have a 300, 350, how do I validate it? 
how can I see back in my say uh, uh, issue list? So I go back and try to show you how to validate this data because that's how you also make a sense out of it. I can go to issues, yeah. So where I have all the issues, I can apply the the same filter which I have applied there. So say I can go to basic uh, JQL and I can focus on more and I can say uh, creator is equal to current user, yeah, something like this and uh, filter it out. And then probably I can see the number of items is 331. I can take them out as well and check their status in progress, done and uh, uh, backlog. And I can validate that particular thing back. Now Jira also allows you to check backward status. So for example, I want to find out what was the status one month ago. Yeah. Then you can also find out that by using the status was field. So status was backlog in progress on done on that particular date. So you can go and get those counts and even less list of those items. So thank uh, Zira has all the history. So technically speaking, you can trace back to your previous Kanban boards. You can trace back to each and everything which you see in your uh, cumulative flow diagram on a particular date and figure it out what was the item was stuck in the in progress stage or done at a particular uh, 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 area. So this is like a type of work you can do here. Go back to the Kanban board, uh, uh, sorry, cumulative flow diagram and try to make some more sense out of it. So we learned that we can see the overall time. We can apply the time filter. Time filter you can apply with the help of window. You can also apply time filter using this area yeah, in case you want to do that. You can quickly also focus on past month and, and apply here. And you can refine the reports by using quick filters. Now, another important thing which I like or I, I use for my teams and all, I can create team level filters also. So how do you create that? Possibly one, one style is that you have a type of issues which goes to a particular team. So you can see a cumulative flow diagram for a given team, or you can identify who are the people who work on that particular team and create a filter. So anytime if the work get done by those people or assigned to those people, then you can, can form a team. In this particular case, I have done based on the number of uh, the specific users, that these are the users, if they have ever worked on it, I will call it as, as a web team. So if I put a web team filter and I can say that, okay, out of my Kanban board, what my web team is doing. And uh, I can see, especially if for my web team, things are not looking that good, yeah? So I can say, uh, let me have the, yeah, setting up here. So I can see something here that looks like the departure rate for web team is more or less stable. Yeah, hardly anything is getting completed in last few days. And I also see that there is something like a trend. Uh, they they usually do it like I, they finish few work. Mar either it could be a change of status issue. They just mark it done. And after that, things remain stable. Yeah, they, they don't mark things in, in the done or things are not getting done. So things are pretty much uh, getting stuck here. And I can say that uh, this is a little bit of a concerning area. I need to find out why things are not moving to a done stage. Ideally, I should have a done stage. I'm moving a little fast. Yeah, I should have a, uh, this, this, this color should be having a better uh, path. The another thing which I see from my web team uh, board is that their backlog seems to be not reducing at least, yeah, maybe increasing a little bit, but it is hardly reducing. And that's the thing. So these, these items are getting, uh, or I would say, on a, this particular day, they marked some items done. Maybe they did a one-time fixing of a lot of things, but after that, they are hardly marking anything done, but things are keep getting added to, to them. So this upper line is showing growth in their arrival of the work. The bottom line is showing departure of the work. And here it is very clearly seen the departure of work is not good. So my take for your this cumulative flow diagram uses is, first, we you need to have a confidence in this cumulative flow diagram. In order to do that, if you are a Scrum Master, make sure that you match these numbers with your issue reports. You take a query. You even go to past dates by using was filter. That issue status was this, this, this on that particular date. 
uh, uh, on that particular date. So you have a confidence that, okay, this makes sense to me now. Even I can tell people about exact details because someone may want to know what were the issues here on that particular date I want to know. So there's a probability when you do investigation that is needed. So as a scrum master, become comfortable with the whole process of plotting it as well as discovery of the data. That's the first thing. Second, try to see the segment of your work item. Maybe the full work item list or work item graph may not make sense. Sometimes a type of work, you want to see it more critically. Uh, usually my uh, idea is some stakeholders creating, some key people creating the, the issues, tasks, and you may want to uh, uh, check their status or some key group of individuals who are involved in a particular work, you want to see their status. This becomes more important, the group thing, when you don't have a status per group. So if I had a status of dev test and all, then the column itself will give me a lot of information. But if I have a simple status, backlog in progress done, then I need to figure it out who is marking, like what kind of work is getting done, kind of work becomes important. And the kind of work can be figured out either by doing some work classification or by way of identifying the type of people who are working on that particular work. So this is all about cumulative flow diagram. As standards, there are features of uh, sharing and all. So this is something you can do. You can, you can click on share and uh, you can send a message and all those things. So that's the standard stuff uh, which, which can be uh, done with any of the JIRA report. If you have any query, comment related to our cumulative flow diagram or JIRA related topics, please do drop us the message. Thank you.